Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be doing the mid-year book tag. I'm so excited to do this video. I did this last year and there's definitely been a lot of interesting books that I've read this year and it's only halfway through the year. So I'm very excited to talk about them and reflect on them. So let's just jump right in. All right, first question is best book you've read in 2024. So for this one, I'm going to pick a book that I read back in January and finished like right at the beginning of February. And that is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. This book is absolutely beautiful. It was five stars for me, of course, and it is the best book that I've read this year. It's a very harrowing and detailed story about Lenny and her parents. They moved to Alaska. Her father struggles with PTSD because he was a Vietnam War veteran, I believe. And I just really, really enjoyed this book. The scenery and location of the book itself is a character all on its own. It's beautiful. It brings you into this world. The relationships that, that Lenny makes in Alaska are really great and heartwarming. There's some tragedy in here. There's friendships, there's love, there's family struggles. There's everything and more. This book made me cry, had me in tears. It was so emotional, but it was still really, really good. And I could see myself absolutely rereading this one day. It is pretty chunky. It's almost 600 pages, but I read this so quickly because that's just how intriguing it it is it'll catch your attention and hold it the entire time this was the first ever Kristen Hanna book that I've ever read and you've never if you have never heard of Kristen Hanna where have you been she is one of the most popular authors that I I've seen three of her three or four of her books because they're really really popular but I've just never had never picked them up and I was like okay like how good can they be so I finally picked this one up and let me tell you guys it was well worth it. This book was amazing. Her writing is absolutely beautiful. I think that's why this book really kind of made me fall in love with it was the writing itself. Chris and Hannah, I think did a, an amazing job of just describing things, keeping things not too fluffy. Yeah, it, it was just so good. And I, I really, really loved it. This book is gonna be really hard to top this year. And I think overall, this probably will end up being my favorite book of the entire year. Question number two is best sequel that I've read so far in 2024. This one is also sort of an easy one, is going to be Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings. This is book two in the Magnolia Park series. This is the first Daisy Hates book, so really, really loved it, really enjoyed it. Love Daisy as a character, love the relationships in this book. And I just, I, it's kind of a unique one. This is, like I mentioned, the second book of the Magnolia Parks series slash universe. So if you don't know, it's basically about wealthy London socialites and it's like one big friend group. Of course, there's like toxic relationships, there's friendships, and it's just, they're young adults. So it's a very, very toxic, I will say that. But Daisy Hates herself is a young adult who is the sister of like Britain's biggest gang lord. Like he's super, super dangerous. His name is Julian and she is his little sister. So of course she's kind of like brought into this world unwillingly, but she has to be because her parents unfortunately passed away. So her brother is like the one that's looking after her. And yeah, this book was amazing. I gave it five stars. I love this book so much more than I loved Magnolia Parks, which is the first book. And let me just tell you, this is a book that convinced me to read the rest of the series because if I didn't get to meet Daisy, I probably would not have enjoyed or even picked up the next Magnolia Parks book. So absolutely, if you guys have started the Magnolia Parks series and you read the first one, weren't really feeling it, I definitely recommend at least reading this one and then making up your decision because like me, you could definitely change your mind and end up loving the series because of Miss Daisy Hates. All right, question number three is, question number three is new release I haven't read slash want to read. So this one I feel like there's quite a few because 2024 has already been a huge year for new releases and there are quite a few that I have not picked up and have not read yet. I think at the top of my list would be Wild Love by Elsie Silvers. Now this is a new book in a new series by Elsie Silver and I have not read Chestnut Springs first so that's why I have not read this one because I've heard there are some characters slightly interconnected into this one and I just want to read the Chestnut Springs series first so unfortunately I will not be reading this for a while because I do want to read the entire Chestnut Springs series first and I haven't even picked up the first book in that series so definitely a new release that I'm really looking forward to reading but I just don't think it's quite in the books just yet the next one is going to be Just for the Summer of course by Miss Abby Jimenez love Abby Jimenez have read three of her four of her books yeah four of her books I am still missing yours truly and then this new one 
just for the summer. So I do want to read yours truly first, but I, it's only one book that I'll have to read. So I think this one is very doable and I've heard amazing things about just for the summer. If I can read it anytime soon, that would be great because we are literally in the swing of summer. So it would be perfect for vibes. But other than that, I do want to read this one before the year ends because like I mentioned, Abby Jimenez is one of my favorite authors and I would absolutely love to read her new book. Also, I have an incredibly big case of FOMO because everyone and their mothers are talking about this book. So of course I want to know what it's about, but I don't want to like read any spoilers or anything. So at the top of my list for sure. Ooh, question number four. Sorry, there's some sirens going on outside. All right, question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So like I mentioned, there have already been so many amazing books released like the beginning half of this year. And so looking for 20, the rest of 2024, I'm not gonna lie. I literally had to look up like what are other books that are being released later this year because all the ones that I knew of last year have already been released at the beginning of this year. So I had to date, do a little deep dive and some research, but I did find a couple that I am very much wanting to read and they are anticipated. So just to name a few, there's This Is Why We Lied by Karen Slaughter. I did read her book, Pretty Girls. I believe that's what it's called. And it was extremely dark and graphic, but sometimes you just need a book like that and you crave one like that. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with me, but it's a thriller mystery and so is this one. And yeah, sometimes you just need one of those like kind of thriller mysteries that are like, kicking it up a notch that are definitely like unsettling. So that one's pretty interesting. There's also Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune, who is the author of House in the Cerulean Sea. And this book would actually be the sequel to that book. And I really, really liked House in the Cerulean Sea. I read that about two years ago and I still think about it. I always recommend it, definitely loved it. So I'm definitely interested to see like what the sequel entails. I don't really know like what would happen next but that one sounds pretty good. Next is The Night We Lost Him by Laura Dave. So she's the author of The Last Thing We Told Him, I think is what it's called. It was like a Reese's Book Club pick, read that one. I definitely enjoyed it. So this author definitely caught my eye. This could be one that I wanna read. There's another Frieda McFadden book. She actually, I think is also releasing the third book in the Housemaid series, like this month in June. So I was really surprised to see another release from her later this year. The Boyfriend, no idea what it's about, but I have, I do enjoy Frieda McFadden's books because they are very short and very fast. So sometimes you just need that to like get you out of a slump or to like up your book reading count of the month, honestly, because they're just such quick reads. So this one's definitely calling my attention too. And then this one I was really surprised to see. It's called The Last One at the Wedding by Jason Rakulek. Now Jason Rakulek wrote Hidden Pictures and I read that book last year. It is a thriller mystery and I gave that book five stars. I think it might be the only five star thriller mystery that I've ever read. So this one definitely was surprising to see. And this one I think is at the very top of the anticipated releases for later this year because I'm gonna pick it up. Like I loved his book, Hidden Pictures. And if it's anything like that one, this one's gonna be quite amazing as well, I'm sure of it. And the cover just looks really enticing and like scary. So definitely looking forward to this one. Um, and then there is another one that I found. It is The Wedding Witch by Aaron Sterling. Now this is book three in the X-Hex series or like X-Hex books. And these are kind of more like Halloween-y and I really, really enjoyed the first two books in the series. I They're so fun, perfect for the fall time, especially like Halloween. I ate them up. They're super easy to read. They're set in like a small town, but it's like fall time. So the description of the setting is really nice. It's like orange leaves, there's witches. Their the characters are witches. So I don't know, it just calls my attention. And if I see this out around like November or October time, I'm definitely gonna wanna read it. So I know that was quite a lot of books, but I'll probably say my top two are The Last One at the Wedding by Jason Rakulik. And I think I'm gonna say The Wedding Witch because I really, really liked the first two books in that series. And I had no idea this one was coming out, but now like, now that I know, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Question number five is biggest disappointment. Now this question made me sad, but I had to look back at all the reads that I've read this year. And honestly, the good news is I didn't really find very many books that have disappointed me this year. It was very hard to choose one. The bad news is I'm gonna have to choose The House in the Pines, which is was a Reese's Book Club read or pick. Um, I read this one back in January, so it was like at the beginning of the year. And honestly, like it wasn't a terrible book by any means, it just, 
kind of fell flat for me and wasn't one that I would recommend. It's kind of more of a thriller mystery, but I've read ones that are way better than this one. So I, like I mentioned, I don't think I would recommend it. It was all right. Again, not bad, but I guess compared to all the other books that I have read, this one would be considered the biggest disappointment. Question number six is biggest surprise. Now I'm like smiling because this one definitely took me by surprise. The book is Mammy, mommy, I don't I don't know how to say it, but this book was so good. I rated it five stars. I did not go into it at all thinking it was gonna be five stars because I don't know, I, I honestly didn't even really know what it was about. I went into it pretty blindly, but essentially it's about like a young woman who is of Nigerian descent, I believe, and she lives with her father who has like a terminal illness. And she it's like based in London. So she's just like a young adult trying to figure her life out. She has a job, she lives with her dad. She's kind of jealous because like her friends don't aren't in that situation, but she's like her dad's caretaker. Her brother doesn't really share or carry any of the like responsibilities that she does. Her mom is very kind of like, she doesn't even live there. She like lives in, is it Nigeria or Ghana? I'm gonna have to look this up because I don't want to get it wrong. Okay, I looked it up and she's not Nigerian. She is from Ghana or at least her family is and her dad is suffering from late stage Parkinson's disease. And yeah, like I mentioned, her mom basically is back in Ghana living there half the time. So she's kind of like stuck in this situation that of course, she loves her dad and wants to be there for him, but she's just kind of thinking like, you know, it's not, it's just not the best situation to be living in, of course. So it kind of just goes from there and stuff happens. It talks about like relationships, finding people on the internet, friendships. It was just such a good literary fiction book that I can't stop thinking about it. And yeah, it definitely took me by surprise. I did not think it was gonna be five stars, but reading it, I remember I read it really fast because it was just so engaging. And just the topics that it discussed, I think was really what um, did it for me. It was so realistic and that's what I loved about it. And honestly to the writing style, part of it is like her own stream of consciousness. And it was funny too, like, don't get me wrong, some of these topics are very heavy, but it was just had like a light take on it or she had kind of this sort of like dark humor about it. So it made it sort of lighter. I don't know how to explain it, but definitely one of the best books I've read this year for sure. If you have not read this book, definitely read it. I, I think I got it from the library, so I don't even own it, but I do think one day I will buy it because I do want to keep it. It was a five star read and I could see myself rereading it one day. Favorite new author. So this is either a debut author or just a new author to me. And the answer to that is definitely gonna be Kristen Hanna. Now, like I mentioned, I have read The Great Alone. I read that earlier this year, but I also read Firefly Lane. Um, it's in my room somewhere, so I'm not gonna go grab it, but that one was super good as well. That one was rated a four and a half star. So both of her books that I have read have been very highly rated and I think about them all the time. I love them. So yeah, she's for sure one of the authors that I now consider an auto buy author. And I do have two of her other books. I have The Nightingale and The Women. I haven't read those two, but definitely on my TBR and I do want to read those because I've just now realized that I love Chris and Hannah, love her writing and honestly this one was a little bit like historical fiction. I know the women and I think the Nightingale are historical fiction books as well and I really like that because I've heard and knowing from this one as well. She like educates you on whatever she's talking about. So in this one it's like Alaska and the nature and the like scary wilderness and it was just pretty educational. It also talks about like mental health. And again, I just love the way she does her storytelling. Very engaging and very emotional, which are like two of my favorite things ever as a reader. So absolutely, Chris and Hannah takes the cake. Favorite author that I've discovered this year. Newest fictional crush. That's the next question. Probably gonna be Christian Hems. Um, he is the love interest in Daisy Hates. And like I mentioned, this book was five stars for me um, because of the romance. And Christian Hems is the main like romantic guy in this story. But he's also like a gang lord and a bad guy, like a bad guy, bad boy. So there is that. And then on the other hand, I also wanna choose Shep. I don't even know like what his last name is, but that's his name and he's from Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. I read this book earlier this year and oh my gosh, this character Shep in that book was super, super, just like the book, the kind of guy that you imagine you would want like your daughter to be with. Extremely tender, very gentle, very loving. So I definitely am like on two ends of the spectrum with Shep and Christian Hems because one is a bad boy and one is like the boy next door that you would want your daughter to date. So I think both of those, if they were mixed into one, would be like my ideal, you know, favorite fictional character. I'm gonna just go with both of them because I like them both for different reasons and I like both of their different qualities. 
And yeah, um, I can't choose. So it's gonna be Christian Hems and Shep. <laughs> I don't even know what his last name is, but if you haven't read Ready or Not, that's a really good romance. So definitely recommend. It does have like the accidental pregnancy trope, but I think it was done very well. And it had one of the most beautiful, like romantic spicy scenes, but it was so romantic in my opinion that it was just so like, aw, like super aw. That's how I would describe it. And that's why I love Shep. Question nine, newest favorite character? Daisy Hates. Yeah, I think it's Daisy Hates. I think she's just so cool. Like she's such a cool girl. She's wealthy. She, her brother is like a badass gang lord in Britain, the most dangerous man in Britain. She has a guy like literally wrapped around her finger and she's like a doctor. She loves to box, she loves to cook. So there's so many like things about her that I feel like I just love and I wanna know her, I wanna be her friend and she's such a badass. And I love how she just tells us everything she's thinking. So yeah, definitely Daisy Hates. She is one of my favorite characters. Read this book if you haven't. Books that made you cry. Now again, I'm gonna go back to The Great Alone but I also chose a backup for this one because I didn't just wanna talk about The Great Alone. A Little Life. So Hanya Yanagihara, A Little Life wrecked me. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. This one had me actually crying tears. This one I was like tearing up at. So it, crazy, crazy stuff. This one, I've talked a lot about it in my latest like few videos. So if you wanna hear more about this one, maybe check those videos out because I don't wanna go too in depth because I could talk about this book for like the next 30 minutes. But essentially this one's extremely hard to read, deals with like trauma and mental health. So there is that very sad book. This one also sad because some stuff happens that is just really unexpected. And I think it's just, you fall in love with the characters so much and everyone around her. I'm talking about Lenny and the main character. So it's just, it's also beautiful. Like it's just beautiful. I would say this one's really beautiful. This one's more so sad. Next question is book that made you happy. Uh, the answer to that one is going to be Kiss the Sky by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I think this one is book four or five in the Addicted series. This one focuses mostly on Rose Calloway and Connor Cobalt like relationship and going into this book I didn't think I would love it that much I thought okay like these characters are part of the entire series but I don't think I'm gonna be super super into their book but I'm not gonna lie this one made me so happy I completely fell in love with Rose and Connor's like love story they're two of, like I, they're maybe my favorite couple in the entire like book series now because of this book so that obviously made me really happy this just made me fall in love with the addicted series as a whole even more but it's the characters in this book and the found family aspect that definitely made me super happy. Next question is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. I think it's this one. I bought this book earlier this year. It is Little Women and other novels. When I bought it, I thought it was just Little Women. So when I received it, I was like, dang, this book is long. But then I realized it says and other novels. So I don't really know like what else is in here. Oh, okay, here. It's, I guess, Little Women, Little Men, and Joe's Boys. So I've seen Little Women, the movie, iconic, but I have not read the book. So I figured I want to read it. It's a classic, why not? When a book is this beautiful, like you definitely want to read it even more, right? So this is definitely the most beautiful book that I have bought this year. All right, last question. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? So again, I couldn't narrow it down to like just one book because there are so many books that I still feel like I have to read by the end of the year. But to name a couple, The Nightingale by Chris and Hannah, the Magnolia Park series. I actually just finished Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home, which is book three in the series. So I think I have two more to read. So it shouldn't be too crazy, but I definitely want to finish and get caught up in that series. The Addicted series is another series that I definitely want to like completely finish because I absolutely love that series. And after reading this one I read Hot House Flower so I'm now on Thrive which I think is book six or seven and then I think another one would be A Storm of Swords which is the third book in the Song of Ice and Fire um, series so also known as Game of Thrones I have read the first two and the Storm of Swords is the third book and that is the next one that I need to read. And yeah, I love Game of Thrones and I have to read this next one so I can completely finish the series. And hopefully I can finish it by the time the seventh book is out. I don't know if that one will ever see the light of day. All right, so I just want to go grab these two, but these are two that I just mentioned. This is The Nightingale Gale by Chris and Hannah. Again, pretty chunky, but I, it's like about the same size as The Great Alone. And then A Storm of Swords, which is like a short and fat book. I'm probably gonna download this one on my like Kindle because 
reading books like this is very hard for me like physically because it's so long and short or like very short and like fat so i'm gonna try to get it on my kindle and then hopefully make a good amount of progress um through there but that is going to be it for this video i have finished the entire mid-year book tag thank you so much you guys for watching this is year two of me doing this book tag and hopefully many more if you liked subscribe like comment and yeah catch me in the next video thank you guys so much for watching and that's it. Bye.